Welcome to a special edition of Sled Talk Saturday. I'm really excited to come to you today and kind of outline how we're going to be doing dog sled rides this year. Um, we are so thankful and grateful to all of you who've come and participated in our dog sled program in the past. And, um, you know, we really struggled though this year. How can we do this in a way that is safe for our guests and safe for our staff, but still gives an amazing experience? And uh, I will echo, I've said this before, that I am really grateful to Y of the Rockies' strong commitment to safety of our guests, safety of our staff, but also quality of experience for people. And um, I believe we found a way to accomplish that this year. One of the concerns we had is in years past, we've done two days a week, we've done what we call the short rides. And they are just under two miles a ride. And we will do between, we'll give between 40 and 50 people a ride a day in that short ride program. And we will have in this room that we're in right now, sometimes over a hundred people in here to hear a presentation about dog sledding. Well, with COVID, we were not comfortable having large groups of people like that together. And so we decided number one to not do the short rides this year. Um, just because even without the presentation in here, there's large crowds of people out watching the rides and watching the changeover, and that kind of thing. So we decided not to do that. But we were still left with a concern, and it is this. Normally, <clears throat> the musher would stand right here on the ride, and oftentimes there'd be a child sitting right here, and the guest or the rider would be right here. <clears throat> this is not a safe social distance. It's only between the head of the musher and the guest, maybe two and a half, three feet. And although you we will be requiring masks and you would be outdoors and moving, we still do not want to take a risk and jeopardize anybody's safety. So we thought, how can we do this? And I came up with the idea of a tag sled. A lot of dog sled tour companies use tag sleds already. And that is where you pull a second sled behind the sled with the musher, and the second sled has the guest on it. But I was concerned about the safety of that because many tag sleds are just pulled with a, a line that runs underneath the first sled, uh, either like a rope or a cable. And that second sled uh, can kind of swerve all over or if I would hit the brakes, that second sled, if that rider didn't know how to brake, would slide up and smack into the back of the front one and I just wasn't comfortable with that. So I kind of put it out on a, a Facebook musher page for ideas and somebody came back and said, well, you need to make a solid hitch because if you have a solid hitch, that back sled can't slide up in if you put the brakes on and gives it more stability. I said, great, how do you do that? They said, we don't have a clue. And, uh, but I started thinking about it and I thought about like ice fishermen use what's called an otter tail sled behind a snowmobile and they have a solid hitch. And I thought, well, maybe there's a way to adapt that. So I'm gonna kind of show you here what we came up with. We engineered and designed a solid hitch right here that this is an otter tail kind of hitch 
And then I used some old pieces of bed frame and bolted them on each sled so that we have a solid hitch. And now, if the front sled hits the brakes, this back one brakes automatically as well. And it's much more stable in terms of sliding around back and forth. It's still going to require some involvement on the part of the rider going around corners and things like that, but it should be very safe and we're really excited to be able to do this this year. We'll be doing it three days a week. We'll be doing rides um, uh, and there'll be just over four miles a ride. So about anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes long per ride. And just to give you a visual of what that's going to look like, I, as the musher, will be right here. And we have a guest with us today who will show you where the guests will stand. They'll be back there on those runners. And we'll do a brief training with them, how to go around corners, how to lean into it a bit, and, uh, but not over lean and we'll teach them what we'll probably have our mushers do when they do have to brake is to give a signal and the rider will actually have a brake as well. Um, some people might be concerned, well what about the dogs? Isn't that going to be really hard on the dogs? Not really. And the reason is this. You're not, they're not pulling more weight in fact, in many cases, they'll be pulling less because oftentimes we would have two riders on the sled with the musher. We are limiting it to only one rider on the back sled. So it may even be less weight than they usually pull. There's a little bit additional resistance with the second sled on the snow, but these sleds glide so easy, it really doesn't create any additional um, work on the dogs to do that either. Um, we are limiting, however, this year to 10 years old and older, and we will not be allowing um, two riders at the same time. There will only be one, and they have to be 10 years old or older. But we think we found a way to give the guests maybe even a cooler experience than riding on the sled with the musher, but also a very safe experience. Safe in terms of the ride, but also safe in terms of COVID. So, hope to see you this winter. Reservations for rides begin in October, and you'll be able to find that online. We'll see you next month with the next, oh, and I should say, really quickly, because we're not doing the presentation, which a lot of people really enjoy coming to that, um, we will still be doing a sled talk uh, online for people to go and see the presentation online. And that way we can continue to deliver that part of this program as well, but in a safe way. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you this winter. Happy trails.